prophetic message for this church for the church in this land for the people of this land a prophetic message even for this state it is a new beginning can somebody say a loud amen it doesn't matter how the old has been for you something new is beginning now in the book of Isaiah please take your seat and so the subject is a new beginning in the book of Isaiah chapter 43 from verse 18 he said, remember ye not the former thing. Neither consider the things of old. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness. I will make rivers in the desert. The beast of the field shall honor me. The dragons and the owls, because I give waters in the wilderness. And rivers in the desert. To give drink to my people. That is my chosen. Somebody say aloud, Amen. He said, forget where you are coming from. Forget about what has happened to you in your past. Forget about how your history has been. Because I'm about to give you a destiny. I believe that God has sent me all the way here and sending the massive vessel God's servant Pastor Yeh Adebo all the way to Idoma land that something very massive and very drastic is about to happen to our land I am here to announce to somebody irrespective of the history you have had a new destiny is about to explode. <laughs> there is about to be the release of waters, rivers in your desert. There is about to be the release of rivers in your wilderness. At the end of it, he said, these people have I formed for myself. They will show forth my praise. The meaning of it is what God is about to do is going to explode in praise. It's going to explode in praise. It's going to explode in praise. It's going to explode in praise. If you believe that your amen will be the loudest, take your seat in the presence of the Lord and listen to the following things. Now, we serve the God of the new beginning. That is first thing to note. We serve the God of the new beginning. The God of new beginning. Secondly, we serve the God who changes stories. That's right. Is the God of the new beginnings? Is the God who changes stories? And finally, we serve the God who creates destinies. He creates destinies. He constructs destinies. 
If it is battered, scattered, shattered. If it is diverted, disrupted. It constructs destiny. When we go through scripture, you will understand the God of new beginnings. He was the God who gave the new beginning to Abraham. Let, let, let's start from Noah. He was the God who gave the new beginning to Noah. When the whole earth was submerged in the flood and the earth literally perished, God picked Noah. In Genesis chapter 8 from verse 20 to 22 and chapter 9 from verse 1 to verse 3, he literally picked Noah. And, he, and uh, by the time he picked Noah, there was no human being on the earth. Apart from Noah and his family. And in verse 19 of Genesis chapter 9, took the three sons of Noah. God repopulated the earth. These are the three sons of Noah. And out of them, the whole earth over overspread. Everybody finished. But God picked Noah. And through Noah, re restarted the earth. It's like the way you restart an engine. Through Noah, he restarted the earth. Through Noah, his vision for the earth continued. True, true Noah, a new beginning coming. There is someone here hearing the sound of my voice. It doesn't matter what has happened to the rest of your siblings or the rest of your family members. It doesn't matter what has happened to the rest of your community. It doesn't matter what has happened to the rest of the people in your state and in your own generation. Thus says the word of the Lord. Out of you, a new thing is started. That amen can be better. Amen. Out of your life and out of your own immediate family, People something are, new is about to erupt. And that new thing will change the whole face of everything. What God could not achieve with the rest of your family members, through you, He's achieved in your generation. There is someone here that God will use to fulfill the destiny that other people in your family could not fulfill. If you are the one that God is speaking to, your amen will be the loudest. Lift your right and say, Oh Lord, start a new thing in my life like you did with Noah. Start again in my life. Use me Lord to restart what you have in mind for my generation, for my lineage, for my family. You believe that shall the Lord say amen. That mantle in your family will not be lost. It will be recovered. It will be restarted. And it will be reused. Shall the Lord say amen. Take your seat in the presence of the Lord. Example number two, Abraham. Like you heard before, Abraham came out of a family of notorious failures. Notably failed. These people were suffering from what I call the trinity of failure. Living without success. Dying before time. Starting without finish. That was their challenge. Living without relevance. That was Abraham's brother Nahor. Abraham's brother Nahor. 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 That's right. Living without relevance. Dying before time. Okay, yeah, not in now. Another one died before time. That one was Hara. The, the, the father of Lot. Another one 
started a journey he couldn't finish. That one was Abraham's father. Terah. That was the kind of family Abraham came from. And out of that kind of family, William Naughty was what? He himself was already 75 years living in his father's house with his wife that has no child. Under that condition, God came and picked him. There is somebody here, God is speaking to you. If you are saying amen, shout the loudest amen. Hey! Shout the loudest amen. Amen. I don't care how old you are now. If you are not more than 75, God can still change your story. Even if you are more than 75 and you are 80 years old, the God who changed the story of Moses as 80 will change your story right now. And right now I take authority over ancestral curse, over every generational curse, over every family curse, whatever has tied down people in your family that is affecting your own life that curse is broken right now and for yourself because apart from what was wrong with Abraham's family something was also wrong with Abraham himself if there is anything that has tied you to the same spot life that is not moving forward your God and my God is giving you a new beginning today. Is giving the church a new beginning today. Is giving the ministry a new beginning today. Is giving this church a new beginning today. If you are saying amen, shout the loudest amen. Give the Lord a big clap of hand as you take your seat. Our example number three. Joseph. Joseph. He was a condemned sentence to the prison. Joseph, Joseph was, was having double challenge. Double trouble. Man said it's like the body that get accident. The man was already a slave. They sold him into slavery. And on, upon on top of that, They now sent him into the prison. Double wahala. Slave prisoner. Totally in a foreign land. It was under that condition. What is the future? In, in the Bible days, a slave was property. If a slave was killed, it was, it was of no consequence. It was in that condition God picked him. Took him from slavery. Took him from prison. Took him from being a stranger. And turned him into the prime minister. The most important person in the kingdom. It was a new beginning for Joseph. When the prison door opened. For him to step out. To go to Pharaoh. That prison door did not open for him to return back. Tonight, a prison door is opening for somebody. And you are coming out of the prison tonight. And that door of the prison will never open for you to return back. If you are saying amen, you will say it like a believer. 
I don't know where the devil has kept you. Your God and my God is bringing you out of there and taking you to where he has in mind to keep you. You believe that shout the Lord say, amen. Tonight, prophesy every yoke of captivity every yoke of slavery every yoke of imprisonment on your personal life and family tonight the yoke is broken Whatever molests you in the dream of the night. Whatever altar tied your life down. Whatever family curse tied your life and destiny down. Tonight they are broken. You are saying amen, say it like a believer. You are saying amen, shout the Lord must believe us. Look at your neighbor, say if God can change the story of of Joseph overnight it will change your story over this night get ready because anything can happen between now and tomorrow positive things I said positive things and I said positive shout the loudest amen lift your hands say father I receive my new beginning now Give the Lord a praise as you take your seat. Check Lord, we're choking at you. My fourth example. Ochabo mavu amene. The example of Ruth. Oh, ma ke uhe you Ruth. 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 Oh no, yeah, Ruth. Was a woman that married, and after ten years lost her husband. Anu ma wan chonya do lo balay bi hi hai guo abu no geku. And she was also barren. Okay, what do ma? You know it is one thing. Okay, we lay. To be barren. Koche ku what do ma? It's another thing altogether. Okay, well, your husband to become a widow. On top of barrenness. Yeah, a poor doma. Am I communicating? Okay, la. Young girls are trusting God to get married afresh. I pan chanya but kolo we choke ne lo bale lempe. Not to talk of someone who is a widow. Ka ke ka ke no che no punu ge ku. That used to be married. No ke wo doma babu. Am I communicating? Okay, la lo che. The question is if, any, if anybody is, is, is interested in marrying her. Some wicked people say, Do you want to die like her husband? Died? Some wicked people say, When she was married, she has no child. Do you want to marry barrenness? That was a tragedy of Ruth. With that tragedy, she decided to move to a strange land. Where she knew nobody. That was the tragedy of her. And then, she began to beg for food. Going to where people are harvesting food. Picking from the ground what <inaudible> drops on the, on, on on the floor. floor. Until the owner of the farm said, just, <inaudible> just leave some grain for her on purpose. <inaudible> that was how Ruth was. <inaudible> Until the destiny changed her. <inaudible> hey! <inaudible> I believe that there is hope for somebody here today. Maybe you can see your life inside Ruth's life. Maybe not all of it. Maybe the barrenness part of it. Maybe the widowhood part of it. Maybe the poverty part of it. Maybe the empty handedness part of it. Maybe the curse part of it. But I am anointed to announce that the God who changed the story of Ruth and gave Ruth a new beginning is giving somebody a new beginning tonight. If you are that person, you will shout the Lord and say amen. If you are that person, you will shout the Lord and say amen. Because 
because of time. Ruth did not just marry. Ruth, she did not just marry. Oh, she married a wealthy man. Very rich. Man. By the name Boaz. This Ruth that was picking food from the farmland from servants whom she was serving. These servants now became her servants. By marriage, she became the owner of the farm that she was once begging food from. That is the kind of God we serve. Where you were once begging, God will make you the giver there. Amen. Where you were once looking for help, Jehovah God will make you the giver of help. Amen. If you are saying amen, say it like a believer. Say a louder believers, amen. 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 Are you still ready for Ruth? Ruth did not just give birth to Pekin. Ruth gave birth to Obed. Obed Obed gave birth to Jesse. Obed Jesse Jesse gave birth to David. David <laughs> David became the great grandfather of our Lord Jesus Christ. The son of David. The root of Jesse. The lion of the tribe of Judah. Hey! In that area where the devil has been fighting your life, in that area, God will make you a sign and a wonder. Out of your confrontations and challenges, God will make something generational to come out of your life. Something that will affect your generation. Something that will impact your world. Something that will impact your community. If you believe that, shout the loudest. Amen. If I stop here, I have already overpreached. If I stop here, I have already overpreached. If the God of Ruth is your Ruth, then your story is changing now. If the God of Ruth is your Ruth, then your story is changing now. If the, is changing now. if the God of Job is your God, then your story is changing now. If the God of Joseph is your God, then your story is changing now. If the God of Noah is your God, the God of Abraham is your God, then your story is changing now. Take your seat. Have I mentioned Job yet? There may be some here who will identify with Job. That is the story of rising and crashing. Where you went up. Very influential. Very powerful. All of a sudden. Relevance lost. Everything lost. Everything was lost in the life of Job. Job to the point where his wife said, "Curse God and die." Why don't you insult God? At the end of the day, the Bible says that Job's wife literally left him. Because the Bible says, when Job was there, he said, "My breath became foul to my wife." My wife could not withstand my presence anymore. Everything left Job, including 
Job that, friends. How close they are The Bible said. He okay. called his friends miserable counselors. That's right. People who will counsel you unto misery. Whatever they speak to you will multiply your sorrow. Those were the kind of people that Job was surrounded with. He told them they were physicians of no value. Doctors that can produce no cure. Of what use is expired drug? It can neither remedy nor be remedied. The drug can't cure anything. And the drug itself cannot be cured. Are you following what I'm saying here today? That was the situation of Job. Then the God of the new beginning. Who says if you are down to nothing. Then I am up to something. He stepped into the life of Job. Picked him up from, from the floor. And turned the captivity of Job around. As he prayed for his friends. And the same people who abandoned him returned back. They returned with gifts. From Job chapter 42 verse 10. They returned with gifts. They ret and God gave Job double for trouble. Twice as much as what he had before. I don't know who God sent me to speak to here tonight. But to finish morning service. We finished morning service today and traveled all the way back here this evening for the sake of somebody. And, her, and that person is the person that is about to experience the turnaround of captivity. If you are the one that will experience the turnaround of captivity, give the Lord a turnaround shout of hallelujah. Hey, 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 hey. hey. The Bible said when God turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dream. There's somebody here that captivity is turning. There is somebody here God is going to give you double for all your trouble. There is somebody here all the people who abandon you they will soon begin to look for you. They will soon begin to return back to your life. If you are saying amen, say it like a believer. Give the Lord a loud shout of victory everybody. Look at somebody by yourself. Say, God is turning around your captivity. He's changing your story. He's giving you a new beginning. Give me a shout of praise to take your seat. Time will fail me to tell you about the woman that was bent double with the spirit of infirmity. From Luke chapter 13 and verse 10. Who had been in that condition for 18 years? 18 years. Until Jesus met her. And the spirit of infirmity broke. And Jesus gave her a new beginning. Her feminine dignity was restored. Anywhere the devil has tampered with your respect and tampered with your dignity, tonight it shall be repaired and my God will give you a new beginning. The Lord is saying, Amen. The same with the woman with the issue of blood. In Mark chapter 5, from verse 25 all the way, Jesus gave her a new beginning. Gave her a new beginning. She spent everything but was not better. Expensive sickness. Very expensive. There are sicknesses that can be so expensive. After the person finished spending, he still dies. That will never be your portion. 
What about the man at the beautiful gate? In Acts chapter 3 from verse 1. This man was crippled from his mother's womb. What followed him, followed him from his mother's womb? Maybe you are here today, something followed you from your mother's womb. Something followed you from your mother's womb. Today, whatever followed you from your mother's womb is broken. Tonight is the expiry day of everything that followed you from your mother's home. If you are saying amen, you say it like a believer. The Bible called him a certain man who sat at the gate that is called beautiful. Why is he a certain man? And the gate had a name. Why should gate have name? And person has no name. Did you say what is the name of this man? No name. Did you say what? Where is he? He said at the beautiful gate. His calamity swallowed his identity. He swallowed his identity. There are people that they use their problem to, to define them. Blind Bartimaeus. Blind Bartimaeus. Bartimaeus is not a name. Bartimaeus is not a name. Timaeus is his father. Bartimaeus means son of Timaeus. Are you Timaeus? Blind son of Timius. Oh, I hope you see. But Timius is not a name. But Timius, how do you know? It's is 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 the is the is is a is a definite description. I'm sure you saw it before. But Timius, son of Timius. But Timius, are you Timius? Simon Bar Jonah. Bar Jonah. Simon, are you Jonah? Do you understand what I'm saying now? So that is how it is. Identity swallow calamity. But tonight the calamity shall disappear. And the identity shall appear. He was sitting around the gate called Beautiful. And his life could not reflect the beauty of the gate. I have seen people who are around people that are successful. And you can't see the reflection of success around them. The same but uh, uh, Bartimaeus, the Bible says he sat at the highway side begging. Bartimaeus no le peyoma or you no le peyoma o chiche o towe beba. Highway is where movement is happening. Movement is happening and he has stagnation. Highway is not where to sit, it's where to move. Am I communicating at all? But Jesus came through the disciples, Apostles John and Peter and give that man a new beginning and a new identity. I am anointed to announce that Jehovah will give somebody a new name after tonight. A new identity after tonight. And everything that followed you from the womb of your mother, tonight it shall expire. Everything that followed you from the womb of your mother, tonight it shall expire. In the name of Jesus, Amen. It shall expire. Amen. It shall expire. Amen. It shall expire. Okay, Everything that followed you from the womb oh, of your no mother man, no, yeah, chuang, me, pon, today, me, no, yeah. it shall expire. Okay, and you are going to hit the road running. Ah, okay, Somebody shout the loudest, Amen. Amen. Lift your hands and say, Father, you are the God of a new beginning. You are the God of a new beginning. I am available. Give me the new beginning. In the name of Jesus. Give the Lord the praise as you take your seat. 
What is the secret of this new beginning? What do you do to experience the new beginning? Number one, our play. Worship and serve God unconditionally. Unconditionally. Let the devil know that he is too small to stop you. Let every witch and every wizard know that you are not serving God for things. You are serving God for him. Job. Even if it slay me, Yet I will serve him. Job chapter 13, verse 15. Let him kill me. I will follow you. It is either God or God. No alternative. No option B. God is plan A. Plan B. Plan C, plan D, plan Z, plan everything. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said, The God we serve, we are not careful to answer you, Nebuchadnezzar. If it be so. The God we serve shall deliver us. And he will. But even if he doesn't, Satan, you are not an option. Am I communicating? Daniel chapter 3, verse 16 and 17. A commitment of no return. A decision of quality. Brutal devotion. Brutal followership. God knows. The devil knows. The witches know. The wizards know. That you are more addicted to God. Than the cocaine drinker is addicted. More addicted to God than those who drink bad tobacco. Incurable addiction. I am telling you my life. From childhood days. Incurable. You are just is you are just there. The devil knows the witches know the wizards. Listen. This is your key number one. By the time you are like that, with God, not just people who go to church for the sake of miracles. Not just those who go to church and then they, 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 they have one life with God and another life. No, no, no. Worship. And serve worship. God unconditionally. Number two, see beyond where you are. Take your seat in the principle of the Beyond where you are, that where your life is now, there is something better ahead. You say, as far as your eyes can see, I will give to you. Genesis chapter 13 verse 15. See beyond where you are. If you cannot see beyond where you are. You cannot live beyond where you are. You can never exist beyond where you are. What you see determines what you see. The things that occur to you determines what will occur for you. What will cross your mind is what can cross your mind. If it's not too big for your mind to handle, it will not be too big for your hand to handle. To see it, you must, to seize it, you must see. Right ahead. Number three. See the possibilities and the almightiness of God. 
Apart from seeing what, where you are going, ask God to show you his bigness his obadapadaness obadapadaness let him show you himself Moses says show me yourself many times it's because we don't know the possibilities of God we don't know how sizable God is that is why we doubt him is God speaking to somebody here no wonder Paul the apostle says in Philippians chapter 3 verse 10 that I may know him let me know you because to know you is to know power that I may know him and the power of his resurrection hallelujah see the possibilities and the almightiness of God number 4 Receive divine direction and instruction. Before God does something, He says something. At creation, God said. And God did. He said it, then He did something. Before he turned water into wine, he said something. Fill the water pots with water. John chapter 2 verse 5. Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 to 5. Before he made Peter to catch the fishes, he said something. I prophesy to someone here. That thing that you will hear from God, that you will see in the realm of the spirit, that will change your life story, is coming your way from this night. If you are saying amen, say it louder, amen. Amen. From tonight, God will say something. He will show you something that will lead to the change of your story. You believe that shout the loudest. Amen. Take your seat. And finally, number five. When you have heard from God, proceed in obedient action. You don't change position. On take action. If position must change, action must be taken. A change of position happens by calculated change of steps. There is something God will ask you to do that will cost you a new beginning. As the lepers in, in Luke chapter 17 from verse 10 as they went verse 11 verse 11 yes as these lepers, as he passed through Samaria now, verse 12, he entered into a village, he met 10 lepers, and then he gave them, he said, go and show yourself to the priest. As they went, they were cleansed. Action is the switch of power. Action is the switch of power. Action is the commencement of manifestation. Somebody's life is changing tonight. Who is that person stepping into a new beginning? Who is that person whose story is changing? Stand on your feet to the loud shout of praise. The loudest shout of praise. The loudest of praise. Lift your two hands everywhere you are. In the next few minutes, I intend to be true so that you can, don't stay too long and we'll be able to go back home. Lift up your hands and your hands and say, Oh Lord, you are the one who changes stories. Change my story now. Lay your hands upon me, Lord. Lay your hands upon me, Lord. Tonight, in the name of Jesus, lay your hands upon me, Lord. Lift up your hands, everybody. 